Hi, welcome back to Live and Breathe Horses. And we're going on with our Words of Wisdom series with these wonderful stories documenting the life and work of Tom Dorrance, collected by his wife Margaret Dorrance and John St. Ryans in this beautiful book, More Than a Horseman. Today's story comes from Jim Glidden, or Glyden, so I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Bob Barrett was a friend and colleague of mine at Merced Community College, where we both were instructors, first introduced me to Tom Dorrance. Bob was the horsemanship and horseshoeing instructor, and I was the instructor of mechanised agriculture, welding and metal fabrication. Bob and Tom had a very supportive relationship to one another. Bob was aware of Tom's role in the development of an automated gate, which ultimately led to the manufacture and marketing of Sun Power Security Gates, which was Tom's number one gate. Tom asked Bob if he knew anybody that would be interested in working with him in the development of another gate, which would later become Tom's number two gate. Bob introduced us and what a life-changing experience for both my family and me that was. Tom endeared himself to my wife and children through our work on this new gate. At this point in my life, I'd been living on and operating a family almond orchard outside of Merced and had a farm shop with space for work on such a project. Because Tom and my father were the same age, a sort of father-son relationship was made and our work began. Tom came to my home and his plans for gate number two, which were drawn on brown grocery bags and his ever-present tool, a quarter-inch nylon cord and his unbelievable patience. Tom explained his idea to me and how the idea grew out of the dumb waiters that he'd observed in two-storey ranch homes as a child. He also felt that there was a market that this design would meet, that the number one gate did not. And the counterbalance found in the dumb waiters was the key to filling this niche. Tom was way ahead of his time with battery solar power source. The concept allowed the installation of his gates to be installed in remote locations as well as the economical operations in, in addition to areas where electrical power was not available. His gates had several safety features thus rendering them safe to operate without anyone getting caught in their mechanical working parts. Each gate had a manual operating feature which allowed the operator to open or close the gate manually. The same basic principles were used on both number one and number two gates. Tom's patience with me and my let's get it done attitude was a revelation to me. When I would get in a hurry, the length of rope would come out of Tom's pocket and a new lesson of patience would take place. That cord in his expert hands saved us countless hours of my method of try and try again. One afternoon I told Tom about a litter of kittens that had been dropped at our doorstep. This happened often to those who live in the country. I told Tom that my wife and I would like to tame one of the kittens as a house pet but we'd not been able to get close to tame him. Tom again gave me a lesson of patience and in about 20 minutes, Tom was holding the kitten and we had a productive mouser and house cat for 19 years. Beside having a feline part of our family, I saw how patience in a relationship could be developed with a little time. At the time that we were working on the gate, my son was in the Navy and both our daughters were away at college. When they would come home, Tom would engage them and would truly show interest in what they were doing. The next time they were home, Tom would pick up right where they were last time they saw each other. Needless to say, this impressed both me and my wife, not to mention the children. Tom was always putting internal relationships ahead of himself. 
It never seemed to be about Tom, regardless of whether it was a member of the animal or human species he was working with in developing a relationship. The number one gate operated on the same principle as the jackknife. It pivoted on one corner and the gate raised vertically from that corner. The number two gate functioned much like the dumb waiter from which its operation had evolved. The advantage was the gate would operate regardless of its weight, length and the material it was made of. The number one gate relied on springs to offset the weight of the gate, while the number two utilised a counterbalance to compensate for the weight of the gate. Tom thought that the number two gate had some advantages over the original, while the original also had some advantages. It was a proven design. The number two gate used the same principle in its opening as the number one. Its advantage was that the gate itself could be of any length, width and be made of much heavier materials. The number two required two pillars, one on each end, which served as stabilisers and to house the counterweight in the other. There was a difference of only two pounds between the moving portion of the gate and the counterweight. This difference resulted in only two pounds of effort to operate its opening, regardless of the design of the gate itself. The pillars were the height of the bottom of the gate, with two extra feet to allow for the transfer of power from the power side to the counterbalance weighted side. The simplicity of the design was all on the grocery bags and could be demonstrated with the piece of rope that Tom had in his pocket. In three months of working around my work schedule, we had a completed prototype of gate number two. The first prototype was installed at Tom's Brother Ranch in Salinas. Bill's ranch house is located on a hillside overlooking his corral. The gate was installed in its prototype condition and with that location, it would get regular observation and use. With the location, Bill was able to allow his horses to roam when they came in from their morning oats. He was able to activate the gate control clicker and have his stock corralled for the day's chores. This all the while Bill enjoying his breakfast. While the first gate was being observed and used daily, Tom and I started on our second gate. The prototype worked well, but we continued to refine and improve the design. The second gate was also installed at Bill's ranch, but in a much used location, the main entrance to his property. This location served as access for several utility companies who had facilities on Bill's property. The gate performed well and was providing, proving to be dependable as well as convenient. At this point in time, Tom and I began working on our third gate, which was installed at the Merced Horseman's Arena on the outskirts of Merced. Tom was at this time satisfied with the gates and their performance. Along the way, he helped me by showing me how being helpful to others and understanding others comes with patience and that each of us can relate to one another while still respecting our differences. Tom was a truly gentle and giving individual with patience beyond any man I have ever known. He was able to meet every living being at their level and begin his magic upon them. Tom was never about himself, but rather the relationships. Tom was an instrument of unity and understanding in all that he did. His ability to get beyond the surface into the depth of trust and accepting between all living creatures should be emulated by all of us. As for Tom Dorrance's influence on me, through a mechanical device, my life was changed and I wish I'd been able to meet him sooner. In the words of Bob Barrett, I probably wasn't ready for Tom sooner in my life. What happened to gate number one and two? Well, gate number one is being successfully manufactured 
by Sun Power Automated Gate in Merced, California. Tom told me when we had number two operating to satisfaction that it was all mine. I, being the type of person that I am, was still farming and had a fulfilling profession as a faculty member at Merced College and was content with my position in life. The basic idea of number two is still waiting to be fully developed. Isn't that how Tom would have had it? Help someone with their development and then leave it to them to decide what to do with it. <laughs> that was a wonderful story. Here's some uh, pictures of the gates. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> thank you for joining us today. Keep tuning into the light and I look forward to see you next time.